Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can dramatically improve your ChatGPT workflow with the help of a knowledge graph. So that instead of having to scroll through long conversations like this when you're exploring a certain idea or a topic, you can have a direct visual representation of your ChatGPT conversation where you can see the main ideas, how they relate to one another, which topical clusters they form, and more importantly, where you can also see the gaps between those ideas. So that can help you generate better prompts that will bridge the gaps between those clusters of topics and lead you to have much more interesting conversations that will touch upon the subjects that are very important to the topic that you're exploring. So if you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate. Also, please subscribe to this channel so that we can inform you when the new videos are out and like this, you can also support our content. So we'll be using an app that's called Infernodus and inside Infernodus, you have an option here, brainstorm an idea. So you click here and then we'll start with a topic that I'm interested in because I just heard about it from my friend, Reggie Watts, who mentioned Infodynamics to me once at a conversation that we had and I want to know more about this. So let's see how this ChatGPT mode can help us. Inside Infernodus, you have uh, this button here, ChatGPT mode, and basically what it does is that it's going to conduct a ChatGPT-like conversation with you using GPT-4 that powers ChatGPT under the hood, uh, but it's slightly modified. The responses you get are shorter, and most importantly, you also have a direct visual feedback on your conversations. So you can see the main ideas as a graph, you can see how they relate to one another, and you'll also have the main topics generated automatically for you. So you have this direct visual overview of your conversation. I can see that Infodynamics is concerned with information, obviously, systems, that's interesting. Then if I zoom in here, I see that it's also talking about transformation, exploration, dynamics, and so on, right? So in fact, what I can do already at this stage is that I can focus the conversation on those topics and have it evolved in this direction. So I will select them three, transformation, explore dynamic, and then click save. And it's going to automatically generate a prompt that will respond to this, but keeping the conversation close to the original subject matter, infodynamics in this case. So here it says exploring transformation dynamically, bridges information processing and adaptation, highlighting the continuous evolution of knowledge through active inquiry. Okay, so I can say now infodynamics, transformation and system. And as you can see, I like to connect ideas that are not connected yet because that will help me build a much better map of uh, this topic. So I'm going to click save and then it produces an answer. Infodynamic transformation systems are architectures where information flow is meticulously orchestrated to enable system evolution embodying the principle that the way information moves and changes fuels innovation within a system. So that's interesting because it already gives me a practical explanation of what infodynamics is, right? So then I can go more into this direction and for example, click on infodynamics again, then I can see what it's connected to. So if I want to explore this cluster, and by the way, the way that Infranodus works is uh, when the concepts belong to the same topic, they will have the same color and they will be closer to each other. So for example, here we have this cluster on, on information dynamics, which uh, also consists of the words like information, system transformation and so on. And then we have another one here on knowledge evolution. And normally if you want to sort of uh, explore the widest territory of knowledge possible, I really recommend to connect things that are not yet connected. So this is why the graph is so useful because instead of ha having to read through this, I can simply click on the nodes that I want to connect. And for example, here, evolution and infodynamics, just two of them, I see that they connect through system, but I want to elaborate a little bit more on that concept. So I'll just select both of them, click save, and then Infranodus will send the prompt to GPT-4 and generate a response that will connect those ideas together. So as you see now, it produced the response and they're much better connected. And here is actually the response that we obtained. And as you can see, when I click on it, it's highlighted in the graph. So you see that it includes a lot of the topics that connect evolution and infodynamics together. And specifically, it's talking about infodynamic evolution, highlights how a system evolves through the dynamic interchange of information, suggesting that the quality and complexity of information flow 
directly influence systemic growth and adaptation. Okay, that's interesting. In fact, as I'm interested in the subject of adaptation, I would like to jump more into it. So I'm going to select adaptation, information, and infodynamics, and maybe even, let's say, evolution. So I'm selecting these four nodes, click Save, and as you can see, I don't even have to think of the prompts I'm giving to the system. I'm just selecting the nodes on the graph that I find interesting, and because we already have the contextual information about uh, this discourse in the shape of the knowledge graph under the hood and also the history of this conversation, then the responses they will be highly relevant to the ideas that I select. So in this case, for instance, it says adaptation relies on information for evolution acting as a bridge in the infodynamic process. The cycle transforms data into meaningful changes, fueling continuous growth and development. Okay, so for example, I see that there is something about evolution and adaptation and infodynamics, but maybe there is also something about embodiment and networks. Let's even click here and see what we can produce. So as you can see, once again, I'm trying to select the ideas that are not yet connected and force the system to generate a response that would link them together. So let's see what it comes up with. Adaptation and evolution within an infodynamic framework embody the essence of a network's growth. Here, evolution acts as both conduit and catalyst, where adaptation, fueled by continuous inf information flux, infodynamic, leads to an evolved state that the network embodies, showcasing resilience and complexity through its transformative journey. So that's great because it connects this idea of evolution and adaptation to how a network evolves, and that's very interesting to me because I study networks, so I can maybe even go a little bit further and explore how adaptation is connected to networks and systems and so on. So there, as you can see, I can just click on the nodes and prompt the system to generate some responses in relation to the ideas that I want to uh, dig in. Or I can also just use normal prompts. So for example, I could also just say, how is uh, infodynamics? related to adaptation, right? So I can also just send the prompt directly and then it's gonna produce a response uh, that will be uh, answering to this question. So that's great because it gives me a really nice understanding of this topic, infodynamics, uh, but in a way that also relates to my interests because as I was steering this conversation, I was choosing the ideas that were relevant to me. By the way, you don't have to use the graph itself to query the system. You can also use uh, multiple insights from Infranodus to generate those prompts for you. So for example, here you have main ideas tab in the analytics panel that you can open right here. And you can see the main topics. You could zoom into a specific topic. Let's say if I want to know more about artificial intelligence, I could just focus on that and go deeper into this subject. Uh, but what I find more interesting is that it has blind spots and the blind spots feature, it identifies the topics that are not so well connected. So here I'm highlighting these topics and the gap between them. And then it proposes me to think of a question that would link those two topics together in an interesting way. So for example, here we have one cluster on information dynamics and another one on artificial intelligence. And they're not so well linked yet, right? So then I'm selecting this, this topic and then I'm gonna click AI inside question button here. And then the AI module inside Infranodus will generate a question that will attempt to link those two topics together. So that's also a really interesting approach to have in any conversation because when you're talking about a certain topic, it always makes sense to connect ideas that are not yet connected because usually that's where you will generate some new insights. So here it's the same thing. Here it's asking, how can artificial intelligence algorithms optimize the resilience of ecosystems by dynamically managing information flow to bridge complexity and systemic transformation? So that's interesting because it links uh, artificial intelligence algorithms and thinks about some possible applications of that to uh, optimize the resilience of ecosystems. This is actually an amazing question. I'm gonna save it to my notes. So if I click here, it's saved to my notes because I will keep it later and I actually will favorite this graph so I don't forget it because the topic of ecology is very interesting to me and uh, I'm really curious about how I could explore this question further. And I can think of the answer myself and this is what I usually like to do, but I can also send this question back to the AI 
So here, as I'm in the ChatGPT mode, I can just save it into the graph and it's gonna prompt the system with the same question. So I'm using the AI to generate a question, a prompt, based on the gap between the topics, and then I send it back to the AI so that it can respond to this question and bridge those topics in an interesting way. And here, in response to the question of how artificial intelligence can be used to optimize the resilience of ecosystems by dynamically managing informational flow, it says AI can analyze vast data sets to model ecosystem dynamics, predict impacts of changes, and propose management strategies. By optimizing information flow, AI helps balance complexity with adaptive responses, guiding interventions for systemic resilience. So that's interesting because it proposes us to use the AI to measure how information spreads through our ecosystems, through social networks perhaps as well, and how we can optimize those to reach a level of resilience that would allow a certain degree of heterogeneity maybe, but at the same time, also make information spread more efficiently, right? So there is a very interesting topic that we can explore further and kind of uh, go on a tangent from here and dig a little bit deeper into this subject. I can even ask the AI, can you please elaborate? And what I like also in the way that it's implemented here is that it doesn't provide me these very long responses that take ages to read. It engages me into a sort of dialogue, giving me short responses and prompting me myself to think in an interesting way. And because it uses the graph as an underlying structure, it's always going to try to connect my ideas if they're too disconnected or to disrupt my thinking if I'm too focused on one idea. This is one of the features inside Infranodus and this is how it also uses the knowledge graph to help me think in a much more interesting way because it will always guide me to explore more if I'm too focused on one thing or to focus on something if I'm too dispersed in my thinking. So this is where the knowledge graph structure is also very helpful. Here it responds, AI algorithms can forecast ecological shifts from climate change or human activities simulating scenarios to inform conservation efforts. Dynamically adjusting to new data, they enable ecosystems to be managed more effectively by identifying key leverage points for intervention. So that's interesting because it talks about forecasting uh, detecting trends and then trying to steer uh, our actions in the direction uh, that we try to optimize for. So for example there I have a very logical question how could we find the most optimal state? So then I sort of receive this response and then I feed it back into the system, visualize it as a graph, get another response and here it answers to me how we could utilize AI to continuously analyze ecosystem data, adjusting management strategies in real time based on predictive models. Okay, so that's interesting. It's kind of going into this direction of management. And here I can also see once again on the graph the main topics that we're talking about. And now also decide if I want to explore one of them in more detail. So for example, if I go to main ideas here and then click to see all the topics, I have an opportunity to zoom out and to look at the main idea. So now I see that we've been talking about in informational dynamics, complex ecosystem. Then we have uh, one cluster on, let me just reset this, evolutionary adaptation, AI ecosystems. In fact, I'll just reset the highlight here so they're all shown correctly. Then we have one on data optimization, dynamic growth, network evolution, information management. This is why it's quite useful to look at this conversation because as we go further, it becomes very difficult to sort of trace uh, what are the main ideas and what are the peripheral ones. Especially we tend to lose track of the peripheral ideas because they're too small. And here on the graph, we can easily see them. So this is how you could use the graph to jump into the parts of the discourse that you're missing out and explore them further. And one other thing I want to show why the knowledge graph is quite useful is that after a while you will have a very dense representation of ideas. And again, not to lose track of the smaller but still relevant topics, you can actually select some of the biggest nodes, like for instance information system uh, network. And let's also even select adaptation maybe and we can hide them from the graph to see what's hiding behind them. 
So there I can see that there is the topic of ecosystems that was quite a big, but we just explored it, so I'm going to hide it as well. And there I see that there is something about resilience. We've already talked about that. Let's hide it as well. Complexity, we can also hide it. And then now we're getting to some interesting stuff that are uh, less visible at the first sight. So for instance, here I see something on intervention, bridging and leverage. That's interesting because uh, it's talking about the idea of control. And maybe I want to see how infodynamics could be used for controlling something, right? So I can click on those, generate a new response. And then, as you can see, it creates a, a cluster of ideas that will link to uh, these main topics of intervention. So, so here it says intervention acts as a bridge, leveraging insights to enact systemic changes through targeted actions guided by strategic analysis, we can nudge systems towards desired outcomes, demonstrating how bridging leverage with intervention effectively catalyzes transformation within complex structures. So that's interesting to me because uh, it's talking about uh, targeted actions. And I remember now that uh, at the beginning of this conversation, we've been also talking about how infodynamics allows you to optimize informational flows and to see where you could apply some force in order for a shift in the system. So I can even write this note to myself here in the notes, infodynamics, as a way to identify the main ideas uh, that should be affected for an effective intervention. I'm going to save this into my notes and move on. And usually the way that I'm going to do this is by removing those big nodes and seeing what is the structure that's revealed underneath. So once I explore those, I can actually click this button also here. It removes the top nodes. I can do it in several iterations until I get to the parts uh, that are less visible, but much more uh, interesting because uh, they are the beginnings of new conversations that I can have on this topic. So for example, here, understanding and learning something. Or I also have a topic on communication, telecommunication, and how it can be used in telecoms efficiently. A completely different subject, but can also be interesting to explore because perhaps there are some really practical mathematical algorithms uh, in that field, right? So then I could explore those algorithms and then apply them back into my thinking about ecological systems, for instance. So this is how you would use this approach. You can try it out on infranodos.com. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And also please subscribe to this channel so you can get informed when the new videos are out. And thank you for your attention.